to the town council. Uh, roll call. Chairman Lennon. Here. Councilor Gouvernale. Here. Councilor Jordan. Here. Councilor Ray. Here. Councilor Sherman. Here. Councilor Sullivan. Here. And Councilor Walsh. Here. Uh, thank you. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Town Council reports and correspondence. Uh, I have one. On Thursday, January 26th, I attended a breakfast um, and award ceremony at the Embassy Suites. It was hosted by uh, the em employer support for the Maine Garden Reserves. And essentially, the event was to thank um, all of the employers in the greater Portland area for people who hire those who serve in the uh, Maine Guard and Reservists. And they pointed out that it had to be a collaborative effort in that these people, when they were called to duty, needed to leave um, their jobs for some period of time and then come back and uh, maintain their employment. So it was really just a breakfast to thank us very much for our collaboration and uh, sort of celebrate what these citizens do for our country um, and for people to meet and greet each other. So I enjoyed it a lot. And they gave us a framed certificate of thanks to the town of Cape Elizabeth, uh, which I thought I would hand over to Mike so he could hang somewhere. There you go. So, no one else? Okay, moving on. Um, this is the opportunity for citizens um, to have comments for items that are not on the agenda. So anyone who wants to speak on an issue, please come forward. And Jody Jordan, 83, Old Ocean of Road, Cape Elizabeth. Uh, town paper, one of the town papers says you're going to have a referendum for the library, and then another paper says you may not or you're not going to. I'm just curious what you're going to do, and, and just let you know that I think it should go to referendum for the town. Thank you, Jody. Thank you. Um, we have a workshop after this meeting where we're going to discuss all that and hopefully we'll come to some resolution and we'll let the citizens know as quickly as we can. Thank you. Town manager's report? No report this evening. Okay. Uh, draft minutes from last month's meeting. Um, does, do I have a motion? Jessica? I move that we accept the February 13, 2012 minutes. Second. Comments? Changes? All those in favor? Thank you, 7 to 0. Um, item 49-2012. Um, this is about the proposed municipal budget for FY 2013. Uh, do I have a motion? Tiff? Um, I move that we refer the proposed FY 2013 municipal budget and special funds budgets to the Finance Committee. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, item 50, 2012, the Riverside Cemetery Master Plan update. Uh, just as a quick background, we did have, uh, we did discuss this in our last workshop, and the uh, committee for the Riverside Cemetery has done, a, I think, a wonderful job um, of producing a comprehensive uh, master plan update recommendations, which is currently online, you can see. Um, and it has all of their suggestions for improvements um, prioritized with timelines and the price tags attached to them all. So if you're interested in this, I would encourage you to go to the website and see it. Um, and I guess this is just to recommend a public hearing for next month. So do I have a motion? Jim? Sir, I move that, the, uh, that we schedule a public hearing for the Riverside Cemetery Master Plan update on Monday, April 9th. 2012. Second? Jessica. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Item 51, 2012. Uh, this has to do with the Fire Department Insurance Services Office Review. And um, I'd like to invite 
the, our fire chief, Peter Gleason, up to give us a brief uh, summary of what this is. Thank you, Peter, for coming. Thank you. Um, the Insurance Service Office is an independent company that comes in and looks at everything we do as far as our training, our, our equipment, our trucks, our people, our response to calls, our water supply. And they take all that information and they boil it down to what they call a public protection classification number. And based on that, the insurance companies use that information to set your homeowners, uh, commercial insurance, that sort of stuff. And we ended up with a uh, class three rating on a scale of 10. Uh, in the state of Maine, according to ISO, there are only seven departments that are class three. There's only two departments in the state that are class two, one which is South Bowen. But those two departments involve full-time people, so I think we finished out very well in the overall scheme of things. Um, there are some opportunities for us. Uh, training is one of them. Their recommendation is 240 hours of training per person per year, which boils down to about 20 hours a month, which for volunteers, I don't think I'd have many left if we required that. So that was an opportunity for some points that we lost there. But equipment-wise, we are in very good shape. Uh, we needed a fire flow of 3,500 gallons a minute. And with our three pumpers, we easily exceed that. Um, we have some issues with our water mains, but as Water District has money and as we do road construction, those areas are being addressed, but uh, we still have some areas where the uh, fire flow is lacking. But if, if we had a perfect world and we had a lot of money, we could fix all of that. And you guys wouldn't have so many dilemmas on your hands. Uh, we did do very well in our uh, equipment. Our trucks are top notch. You guys give us great equipment. Um, and a very important part of that was the ladder truck with the equipment and the fact that we have a ladder truck. They require a ladder truck for um, any buildings more than 35 feet in height, which we have many, many buildings like that. A lot of them are homes. And what people forget about the ladder truck is it's not so much how tall the building is, it's where we can get the truck to use that ladder. So there was a couple things on the ladder truck that we didn't have. And there's all sorts of rating agencies out there, as I'm sure you encounter in all your other things. NFPA says we have to have this amount of ground ladders. Insurance Service Office says we have to have this amount. So we lost points because we don't have, we went with the NFPA standard, which is National Fire Protection, not with the ISO standard. So we lost a couple of points for that. But um, overall, I think everything went really well. Uh, again, as I said, we're a class three department, which uh, for volunteer department is outstanding. The only way I think we could move up to two is to uh, have full-time personnel, which I don't see the need for at this point. Um, Again, you know, I think it's, it's a testament to the, the support that we get from the council that we have the equipment to do our job and it's top-notch stuff. And we're also very fortunate that we have the people that will still volunteer. A lot of departments are struggling with that, but we still manage. But again, I think they have some ridiculous standards as far as the level of training. But overall, it's, it's very positive for the department and very positive for the town. Questions? Uh, thank you, Peter. Questions? Peter, um, is this an annual <coughs> review? It's a 10-year review. And we had it done, and we were class three 10 years ago, and we stayed at class three. We are on a, class three starts at 70, and we're at 72 points, so we're just above that rating, but I don't see that changing in the foreseeable future. We would have to have something drastic, new construction or something, before they would come back. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Thank you so much. So I guess this doesn't require a vote. This was just a presentation. Um, Jesse, I apologize. I just saw you there. Did you want to say anything about Riverside? Some, no. no. Okay, thanks. Um, item 52, 2012, Capital Improvement Plan and Coordination. Uh, Frank, can I turn to you for sure. an overview? Yep. In our um, February meeting, uh, as we were discussing the potential for issuing debt for the library, we, did, we discussed the fact that we really should be looking at our capital requirements um, in a more holistic way in terms of understanding what the needs are uh, in a variety of locations in town. Um, and rather than look, making specific discrete decisions that are um, made in isolation. So uh, according to our meeting uh, in February, we just decided that, that some of us would meet with the school board and Greg some members of the school board and Greg Marles. We did that on February 17th. It included uh, Mike and Sarah and myself, and as well as um, Superintendent Meredith Nadeau, uh, Michael Moore, who's the uh, finance chair of the, of the school board, and Mary Townsend, who's the chair, as well as Greg. Um, so we discussed the, the need to look at capital requirements. And if you may, you may recall that 
this was really prompted by the fact that the schools will be paying down debt over the next several years, and some of the assumptions regarding uh, library funding was that perhaps that debt reduction would permit borrowings to the library. So we wanted to look at that overall. Um, to be more specific about it, uh, over the next five years, the schools will be repaying about $4 million of debt. The town also will be repaying about $4 million of debt. That's the current schedule. Um, and this reduction begs the question of whether or not there are other needs in town that we could replace this debt with in order to fund other requirements. So things that we need to look at are the schools, municipal facilities, including this building, uh, other municipal infrastructure, the possibility of a fund to support uh, land purchases for open space preservation, and of course, the library. Uh, and to put this in perspective, the town and schools today combined have total debt of about $20 million. So if no new borrowings occurred, total debt would fall by $8 million in the next five years to about $12 million. However, on the other hand, this debt can be replaced or reborrowed with no incremental cost to taxpayers, which is the reason why we need to think about our capital requirements over a long-term basis, not just in the immediate future. So if, if residents decided that there were capital needs that uh, were a priority that, that exceeded the replacement amount, it's worth noting, just to keep this in mind, that if we wanted to borrow beyond this, or an incremental million dollars of borrowing for existence, it would cost the median household approximately $1.40 per month for the town to borrow a million dollars uh, incremental over uh, above what we have already. Um, and if residents decided there were capital needs that exceeded the replacement amount, it's no, it's, it, we would then obviously uh, borrow more than the $8 million pay down. But that is, that's just not planned, that is just part of our consideration as we think about our overall capital needs going forward and the needs for repair and placement of facilities. So the bottom line here is that uh, we have the ability to replace this existing debt over the next five, five years with no additional cost to taxpayers. And equally important, we can do some incremental borrowing that costs about $1.40 a month for a million dollar increment. But there are clear limits to how much we can, the market will allow a municipality to borrow, our so-called debt capacity. But right now, we think we have capacity to do somewhat more. Bottom, bottom line, the important question for the town is what our priorities are, how should, how should this debt capacity be utilized? So in thinking about that, um, in the meeting, we, uh, we uh, discussed the fact that the, the town and school should launch a simultaneous study of capital requirements in order to produce a comprehensive analysis of potential future needs. This will permit the school board and the town council to consider the respective priorities within the context of available funding. Second, in order for the school study to be launched uh, expeditiously so, it could, so we can be considered uh, within this fiscal year uh, to consider both maintenance requirements and educational requirements, the capital study should be financed through overlay funds uh, within the next, within the 2011-2012 budget, which is available. And finally, um, these efforts to assess town and school capital needs can be undertaken without interfering with the execution of the library plans, which is an important element of our discussion in February, which have um, been independently developed. So there's nothing within this capital review effort which should slow down progress of the library study group or activities they're undertaking. Um, so I think that covers it. I don't know if there's anything else in the meeting, Sarah, that you can think of that we should add to this? Or? Does anyone have any question? Jim? Um, good report. Thank you. That's, um, that's pretty. It's important to have that information. I'm glad that you were able to get to it um, this quickly. Would a, an analysis of our existing space be part and parcel of whatever we're doing here? Mike? We, we haven't drawn up the scope of work, but obviously that's something we need to look at. We, we've identified some uh, surplus space in the police department as a result of some of the regionalization we've done. and. You know, we've been struggling on how to repurpose that space. So one thing, particularly as we look at this building and some of the uses within it, uh, there may be a, a portion of some activities now in the town hall that might be able to be utilized in the police station. Okay. So there, there is a possibility of, of, of rolling that into this effort just to get a real handle on what we will. possible repurpose <coughs> opportunities there may or may not exist. Good. Thank you. That's good. Jessica, um, could I get a copy of this in writing, Frank? Um, I didn't see it in our document. It's on the it's on the document list on the on the. I didn't have it in my packet. 
So. It's on the website. Is it on the website? You mean the report that Frank just gave? Yeah, I don't. I don't think we have it in writing. Okay. Yeah, I'll send it in. So if, yeah. I'd, thanks. Um, and can you um, just just repeat what you were saying about um, <clears throat> the study? This is something that um, would be paid for by overlay funds. So this this would be a study done outside by outside personnel, not not within our own. Uh, uh, school board or town people, this is something you would pay someone else to do? This would be done in order to allow them to do a full assessment. The, the, the Greg, in his capacity, has a good understanding of what the maintenance needs are and ongoing operations of the buildings. This would be an outside consultant used to uh, do a long-term planning analysis of the requirements, as well as doing an assessment of the academic requirements in a sense. Are the, are the science labs, for example, do they need to be replaced? Do they need to be updated? And so they need somebody who has perspective on a broader range and broader school districts beyond just Cape to be able to understand that. Do you have any idea of the cost involved in these? And are they two separate studies? Uh, are two separate sure. entities or individuals? Like, do you have more information? My, sorry. My, my impression from the meeting was that they were going to hire sort of the equivalent of an engineer not so much just uh, educational consultant, it was more building based, to go sort of do what the equivalent of what you do if you're going to buy a house, to go around, say what are the problems, what are the issues, et cetera. And I thought that, they, that we had discussed doing it for both municipal and school buildings. Is yes. that right? So, so they would look here and community service and schools. So we have an idea of what all of our buildings may need going forward. That was what I. Yes, I, I didn't clarify that yet. Yep. And I'm assuming that study would not include the library since <coughs> we've already, or, or would it? Would the same engineer look at the library? We're not going to look at the library structurally. We're yeah, part okay, of fair enough. That's what I thought, but just wanted to clarify. And, and, excuse, you didn't say what you thought the cost was going to be yet? You didn't know yet? I, didn't, I missed that. One of the outcomes of that meeting was that the superintendent agreed to work to take the lead and help it do contact particularly some of the school experts to, to get a, a framework of a, uh, an amount and with between uh, Meredith finishing a budget and myself finishing a budget, uh, those were the priorities in uh, the last couple of weeks since we met. So I, we haven't discussed it since. So just to recap, this is for, uh, to look at our buildings essentially, all the buildings, the municipal and school buildings in town and see what their, basically what their shelf life is at the moment. And what, what and, and so, how, do you know how far ahead you're gonna look? In other words, you're gonna ask this engineer uh, for a five, 10, 15 year projection, or? I, I think it'll depend uh, on, you know, discussion. I mean, I would assume it's gonna be long term in nature, but I think we won't know exactly the scope of it until they start writing up an RFP. Okay. So back to what Jessica was asking, the cost for this, is that going to come before the town council and or the school board prior to approval? The, the plan is for the council to fund it if uh, the majority so desires, and that's what it would definitely come back to a meeting of the town council to vote uh, yay and nay on any funds. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, okay. Again, that's not a voting item. Uh, thank you, Frank. Sure. Item 53, 2012, Future Open Space Committee charge. Um, we have three FOSS members on the council here, so Frank, do you want to briefly say what it is, and then you guys weigh in if he? Sure, and I can, uh, yeah, I'll introduce it, and then uh, Caitlin and Jessica can add to it. Um, and you, this one, is on online, so I uh, apologize for the other not being there. So, and the, the memo uh, does a good job in describing exactly what's, what's there. Basically, um, the uh, future open space uh, preservation committee uh, in our last meeting um, decided that we're going to request of the town council a uh, modif modification of our charge. Um, and the modif and the, it relates to uh, specific uh, actions that we were under, supposed to undertake under the uh, Open Space Preservation Committee um, uh, charge that the Town Council gave us. It relates to two issues in particular which are in the memorandum. One has to do with um, 
uh, indicated that FOSP should identify specific parcels as priority parcels that we would um, be a product of our work. And secondly, it, um, it related to that as well is that FOSP would um, supervise a survey to determine town in resident priorities as it relates to specific parcels. And uh, basically what we're uh, asking for a change with here is that we will not actually recommend specific par parcels. And let me give you an explanation for this. Um, at the February 29th meeting, the FOSP committee voted unanimously to, um, to, uh, uh, to eliminate the need for identifying specific parcels. Instead, the committee proposes to replace a list approach with one which focuses on the framework for the town to proactively and opportunistically pursue uh, in terms of open space. And FOSP is requesting the town council act on this request as soon as possible since we're in the midst of um, launching the survey. And this is key to the survey. Now, um, so really, the, I think the most important thing is why are we asking for this change? And, um, and the change basically is this. Uh, originally, the charter was we were going to come up with a list of specific parcels as priorities. And now we're suggesting that rather than do that, we clearly identify uh, characteristics of properties that are our priorities and put into effect a process by which uh, our recommendations will be, be uh, executed. Um, the, re the reason why we're doing this is, first of all, um, identifying specific parcels uh, would become the focus of all of our efforts when, in fact, our work is really geared towards creating a framework and a process for preserving open space over the long term. Second, uh, as the idea of a list of target properties had become the focus of public attention, as opposed to the actual process of trying to preserve space, we felt that this would become an impediment to our goals and actually be counterproductive for us achieving our goals. Third, it appeared in our work that the most important output that the committee could produce was to clearly identify the criterion that would make any parcel valuable as an, as an open space asset and to identify the tools by which those parcels could actually be preserved and working with residents to employ those tools effectively. And finally, we felt that to achieve these goals, uh, this is a very important aspect that was really absent from our original charge. We wanted to be sure that we create a sustainable and workable process that can put our recommendations into effect. And we think this will make the process of preserve, preserving open space more of a living and sustainable element of the town's operations overall and respond, giving us the opportunity to respond to opportunities as well as to be more proactive in, uh, uh, in appropriate situations on a real-time basis. So uh, the specific uh, wording of the recommendation is listed in the, in the memo. Um, basically, uh, paragraph six, we indicate change would be FOSP shall recommend a process slash mechanism for evaluating open space opportunities and proactive acquisition <coughs> identification, including but not limited to identifying criteria for open space priorities and a party or parties responsible for making open space recommendations to the town council. And second, FOSP shall supervise uh, a professional statistically relevant telephone survey of town residents identifying priorities for open space preservation and preferred methods of funding. Um, so that covers it. Uh, we also are presenting the town council with a status report, which is described in the memo. Uh, before we go into that, uh, Caitlin or Jessica, do you want to add anything to the explanation? I was just going to say that you did a very nice job summarizing succinctly as to what we've discussed in the last couple meetings. Nice job. Yep. And um, uh, the FOSS committee did hold its public forum. Uh, on the 7th, and it was very well attended, and um, um, so I wanted to add that as well. Right, and actually this was discussed at the forum. Mm -hmm. yes. It was broadly supported at the forum. So I guess I need a motion. Do you want to carve that into a motion, something like? <laughs> um, I guess the, the motion is to uh, accept the recommendation of the FOSS committee to uh, change the uh, charter as um, described in the um, memorandum that we have. Any further discussion? Question. Do all three members of the FOSS committee support this change? It was unanimous vote. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other comments or questions? 
All those in favor? 7 0. Uh, so now is the second opportunity we have for citizens to comment or have discussion for items not on the agenda. Please come forward. Hello. Hi there. I'm Penny Jordan, and I live on Wells Road. Um, I am here tonight to voice my opinion regarding Thomas Memorial Library vote. Um, I want to applaud the council for the goal that they set uh, early in 2012 regarding the uh, recognition that we need to schedule a citizen vote on um, the new vision for the Thomas Memorial Library and Cultural Center. And I, I believe this decision uh, was a, a very informed and wise decision and should remain consistent at this point in time. Uh, because I think it recognizes the council's view uh, at the point of goal setting that a project of this magnitude uh, should really seek citizen input. And so I just want to stress that I hope you remain consistent with that goal that was set at that time. Um, and I thank you very much. Thank you, Penny. It's nice to see you. <laughs> um, Can I do one quick one? Sure. Yeah, I was looking at my email earlier during the meeting and I see I got one from Bob Malley that I did want to relate to you. There's been a lot of questions about where we stand with the short road path uh, and actually he sent me an email just updating me at 6, uh, 18 p.m. Uh, we, we've been, there's been a hold up for the last month and a half and I think David Harry's called me six times on it, uh, awaiting from the, the Augusta office of the Federal Highway Administration something called the categorical exclusion. The, the great news is last Thursday we, we received the categorical exclusion, which basically is the, the federal approval for the, for the specs, the plans, uh, all of the environmental issues, uh, all of that. And I, uh, you know, the, the federal government had it for several months, uh, you know, and we kept awaiting, and there were lots of questions which our engineers answered, Bob answered. Uh, it's now uh, back at MDOT, uh, I mean Department of Transportation. Uh, we've given them the, the st uh, draft specification books. Uh, and, you know, it, we, we got stalled a little bit about a month ago. The, the, the specs were already ready to go. And they assigned a new project manager, and the new project manager wanted them in a totally different format than the earlier project manager. So, again, they appreciate the work that it, uh, AMEC did uh, revising that. But anyway, there are still just a couple of loose ends, uh, but we're very close. And Bob's estimated timetable currently is that we will probably advertise bids on April 5th, uh, which we originally hoped to have done on February 29th, uh, that, we'd open, that we would open bids on April 26th, uh, that the contract would be signed and awarded the week of May 1st, and that work would commence on May 14th. Uh, this is, again, subject to the, the Federal Highway still has the right to a two-week period once we say we want to go out to bid, that they can step in and stop it. We, we don't expect that, but we, we do have to plan for that two weeks. Uh, the only other thing that, that Bob mentions in this email is that, uh, you know, he's already, uh, on Friday, he met with uh, one of the representatives of the Beach to Beacon, the TD Beach to Beacon Road Race. and. The project, because it's starting late, we had hoped to have it totally done by then, and it won't be. Uh, however, the, the specs will provide there'd be no work uh, afternoon on Thursday, August 2nd, and no work on Friday, August 3rd, so that for all, those, all that extra activity uh, in the traffic during registration, those periods wouldn't be uh, harmed by construction. So the good news is that it looks like it's finally happening, uh, but... Uh, you know, April 26th tentatively could be a very big date. That's the date we open bids. So that, that's the update. Thank you. Good news. Um, Question. Yeah. Sorry. Can you tell um, Michael um, approximately how much this is going to cost the taxpayers? Uh, there's a federal grant of 729000 roughly, and the council has previously appropriated a little over 100000 I believe, mm -hmm. a little over 100,000. Thank you. Great. 
and, and there was some earlier monies that we spent on design, and, right. but for, for this phase of construction. And then, you know, I think most notably is citizens donated over 100000 but I think it was $104,000 through uh, a citizen organization. And that check has been received and the money's been earning a small amount of interest. Thank you. Um, okay, that wraps up the formal town council. We are going to adjourn and go into a workshop in which we're going to further discuss the library and our timeline for um, hearing from citizens and public um, hearings and, and a, finally a vote. So obviously everyone's welcome. The workshop is open to the public and uh, thank you very much for all those who came. I guess I need... Sure. So I, I'm just, is, are we going to deal with the hardship abatement first or at the end of the workshop or how's that going to work? The, the material didn't. Oh, thank you. The application didn't get completed, so okay. we're, uh, we're not doing that. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? 7-0.